All I can say is, uh, you feed your poets better in Canada. <laughs> Everyone knows we poets are in it for the glamorous parties. <laughs> um, I'd like to start with thanks on behalf of Ben and Ian and I, the judges. Um, first of all, to Scott and Christine for their incredible hospitality tonight. Thank you so much. Um, to Ruth Smith and her team for their amazing organizational abilities. And to all seven of the shortlisted poets for the powerful, generous readings and performances they gave us last night. Um, on a personal note, I think Ben and I, as relative newcomers um, to the scene uh, of contemporary Canadian poetry, we were really, really grateful to our fellow judge, Ian Williams, who is such a generous and knowledgeable and insightful companion and guide um, to the landscape of poetry here. And certainly for my part, what I discovered is that Canadian poetry now is thriving, and in fact so thriving that Donald Trump is probably gonna start imposing tariffs on it any minute now. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a saying I love, which is sometimes attributed to Ezra Pound, though it doesn't much sound like him. It goes, it matters that great poems get written, and it doesn't matter a damn who writes them. Um, and it felt a little bit like that, reading through the boxes of Canadian entries this year, shorn of all knowledge and preconception of personality and careers and backstories. Um, it was almost like encountering the work with a certain purity that let each poem sing anew. And I keep thinking about that image from Anna's speech last night of the paper boat. Um, and so my final thanks are to all the poets and publishers who entered books this year, um, who sent out their little poet um, paper boats onto the waves with the faith that they wouldn't sink. Um, and I can tell you that they did reach the other shore, so thank you. Um, so having only known the great peaks of Canadian poetry visible from a distance, um, I came to know uh, with these boxes of books, these um, toppling piles that I kept tripping over in my living room for months, um, that in fact it's a hugely varied ecosystem full of different landscapes. There are deep forests and prairies, um, there are lakes and there are scattered islands in Canadian poetry and I think some of that huge variety and richness is visible, I hope, in the short list of three um, that we heard last night. Um, Billy B Ray Belcourt's This Wound is a World um, is a moving and thoughtful meditation on what it means to move through this world in a queer and indigenous body. Um, and what it means to summon a voice to speak and sing from that place. Um, and there's a real freshness and originality to the tour de force, which is that book. Um, uh, Aisha Sasha Johns, um, I Have to Live, as Ian said last night, does incredible things with the, the very, very simple declarative sentence. Um, her book feels like it functions at different scales at once very large in the ambition of its project and very small in the tiny micro-modulations of tone um, that, that add up cumulatively to something uh, very powerful that feels almost like poetry as ritual or incantation. Uh, Donato Mancini's same diff um, is a, is a hard-to-pin-down creature. Um, it, it reminds us that language is far from a transparent medium, but that actually it's the bubbles and imperfections in the glass um, that so much of the struggle and the beauty um, comes from. Uh, his, his book, 
um, in its assemblages um, speaks to various paradoxes that go to the heart of poetry, how to make something new um, out of these shop-worn materials of language, um, and how to um, give something generous uh, to the world um, that comes uh, filtered through a single consciousness. Um, and so the winner of the 2018 Canadian Griffin Prize is Billy Ray Belcourt. <laughs> I didn't prepare a speech because I physically could not bring myself to do that. Um, I would like to firstly uh, thank the, the Cree women in my life who have indelibly shaped me as a poet, a thinker, uh, as someone who desires love at all costs and who has to, has to document that in any which way that he can. So my cookum, Teresa, for her... <laughs> I know she's watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> for her love and care and the desire to defy the odds to bring me into being to my mom, Roberta to my sisters, Courtney, Brittany my grandmother, Geraldine my cousins, Zara, Jasmine my aunt, Patty for all that you've done to support me and, and to, to love and to, to know that loving me would would make sure that our lives would be, would be richer. Uh, this book was written not to be a book. It was written between the ages of 19 and 21 to allow me to figure out how to be in the world, a world that I did not want, a world that many of us who are indigenous did not want. And, but in the, it was written also to try to bring about the world that we do want collectively. And to the judges, uh, Ben, Ian, uh, Sarah, for, for noticing in this book something worthy of, 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 of readership. Uh, thank you. 